Hi everyone, Shane here on this pleasant Friday. It's 14 degrees Celsius. It's uh, slightly fresh with a gust of wind. So please excuse this microphone I've got round my neck. I know it looks a bit silly, but I live next door to a school and now and again noisy kids will uh, appear and uh, neighbours where I live seem to get lively when I'm doing a video. I should have probably gone somewhere else to do this video but anyway today is a gun reveal a new gun that I've acquired that I bought two days ago so I thought I'd uh, you can fast forward if you want to get straight to the gun and see me shooting targets with it but I thought I'd tell you why I bought a gun how much it cost where I bought it from and all the what I think is relevant information but if you're not interested or a boy you're stupid just fast forward and you'll get straight to the to the point but um this has been my go-to gun, my old trusty uh, Kral MP02 puncher that I've used for quite some time. It's been very reliable. I paid £350 for this gun and I've been more than happy with it. And there's no faults. I've never used it with a magazine ever. I just uh, basically thumb the pellet straight into the breech. Um, so I've been using single shot formatting guns as, as, as often as I can and basically put that there a second um basically i go to a shooting a shooting club it's not a club but it's an archery center and uh, air rifles in thurliston in leicestershire and uh i go with john my friend and me my son sometimes comes along and he's got a gamo boxer and they've got uh it's a little metal bomb with three holes and bells beyond the holes and it's at 50 yards so normally on a calm day with this gun i normally hit it on a regular basis but uh i was at the i was at the place a couple of weeks ago and it's a bit blustery like it is today it's a bit calm and all of a sudden there's a violent gust of wind that's how today is just the same and uh, my son sat next to me with his little gamo uh, ball pup boxer and uh he was regularly shooting the bell at 50 yards and uh, and I wasn't so whether or not I was using I can't remember what pellets I was using at the time because in my toolbox I've got a multitude of different brands of pellets but whatever pellets I was using at the time I was hitting it now and again but not successfully as many times as my son was so that that was the first sort of instigator he sits there going ping ping in all the wind and he was using the same weight of pellet 8.33 or 844s uh, i think he was using air arms but um either way i thought oh i'm not hitting that but i'm in bell as often as my son is it's not good now he's got a lot of shooting experience he started when he was 13 and um, we used to be pretty naughty all them years ago you wouldn't get away with it these days of going down the canals um, we never hurt anybody never shot anybody anything never come into any trouble uh, never had the police involved in any of it but i suppose it was a bit naughty but we used to walk down the canals 30 years ago uh, no not 30 years ago he's only i think he's 34 but when he was 14 so a good 20 years ago we used to walk down the canals for a few miles in the summer with our little spring break barrel guns and uh, shoot it I don't know I'd take a bag with me with with some empty cans in and tin cans and things like that and uh, we'd set one out in a farmer's field at 30 40 yards and we'd both be plinking at, uh, at things like that so anyway so he's got um, he had a big delay off guns he hadn't he hasn't used any for years and then suddenly he's got back into it so uh, so he bought his little PCP I think it's the first one he's ever bought and um, so yeah he, he was he was sort of out shooting me so i thought maybe it's time i bought i mean this gun up to 40 yards 50 well 40 yards 30 yards it's very very accurate for a 350 pound gun so that was all the instig all the instigator was my son into why i bought a new gun i got made redundant from work recently and um and i cashed one of my pensions in so i had a couple of quid spare so i thought it's time i bought a new gun now, when you go into a gun shop, it's like a, it's like a kid in a sweet shop. You look round at all these uh, guns on the wall, and it's sometimes hard to come to a choice of what gun you want. So, I went to um, my local RFD, John Nibs, 
uh, that's what he's known at locally John Nibs but um, I never remember the name of it so I've got my notes wrote down here it's the country store gun shop so that's where I bought my new gun from and that's where I bought my HW45 pistol from it gave me a fair deal uh, the gun cost me 795 pounds and I bought some FX mounts because the gun needs a large it's got a large capacity magazine so to to put your scope on with the magazine you need sort of high-rise mounts so I've got some adjustable FX mounts and uh, I've let the cat out of the bag now haven't I because you know what gun it is more or less but uh, I'll show you the gun in a moment and I'll show you me shooting it but originally I had my eye on a second-hand um, Day State Wolverine 2 and it was a thousand and ninety nine pounds I believe with a, with a average hawk scope on it nothing special a silencer and a bipod and I thought it was a bit pricey at that price I wasn't really interested in the uh, I did say you know can you come down any on the price on that gun but turns out they thought it was a reasonable price so I looked around and looked around and I came home and scoured the internet looked on um, Gunstar, Gun Trader and then I got my sights set on a Red Wolf, a Day State Red Wolf and uh, qu I quite like those guns and I didn't want to spend £2,200 on a brand new one but at the same time I didn't want a second hand one you know you don't know really the history or how many shots it's fired or anything like that how old it is and I'd rather have something brand new if possible I, uh, I give up on the Red Wolf side of life and um, and then I looked at the high-end sort of guns and you, you're talking some serious money so I spotted one in the shop and I uh, I overlooked it a couple of times and my son says that'll be a good gun dad that one there uh, it's the one I'd have so I came home and did some research did some more research watched lots of videos um, scoured as much information as I could and then I came to uh, the conclusion I'm gonna buy this gun so here is my uh, my new gun it's the FX Dream Classic in 177 cost me 795 pounds um, looks like a pretty plain Jane sort of a gun at first glance it just looks like a boring sort of uh, a boring sort of traditional style rifle but um, I fitted it with my Vict Optics 6x24x50 scope and uh, first vocal plane that I've yet to do a review on very good scope I'm really over the moon with this for £139 I've had it for quite some time now it's not very good at close range it uh, the, the closest the scope will focus is I think it's 20 yards I made a bit of the boo-boo I should have got the less powerful one uh, not the 24 mag possibly the 18 so it's awkward to um, to re-zero in a, in a short garden as it's only 20 yards closest focus but when you get out to the gun ranges it's perfect uh, it's fantastic scope I'm over the moon with that for 139 pound especially being a first focal plane um, getting back to the gun it's quite light I'll have to put the figures I can't remember off the top of my head what it weighs but it's very very light for what it is um, it's got that's not the manometer that's the gauge for the uh, regulator pressure it's got uh, an amp regulator um, I believe it's developed by FX their own regulator and it stands for adjustable match precision so uh, and I did put it over the chrono with the standard 844 pellets it was doing um, a nice respectable 11.7 11.8 .7, and 11.9 over a string of shots with the really heavy pellets that I've been using all that I started to use um, 10.34 grains it was something like 12.1 foot pounds so it was just bordering uh, the limits of uh, legality as it were but with the 844 grains it was somewhere up there 11.9 789 11 point 7 didn't register 
As far as the trigger goes, it's got an absolute brilliant two-stage trigger. I've got the uh, gauge on it and it was £1.16 ounces and that's a precision matched grade trigger that's fully adjustable but I haven't touched it out the box it was uh, as I say it was just slightly over a pound perfect but this gun is is not how I first saw it when you look at this gun it's just a, a bland looking gun but it's also uh, it's also sort of a piece of Lego what I mean by that is you can configure this gun if you want to buy the kit or the parts for it uh, to turn it into 11 different guns. <laughs> I won't possibly do any well you can turn it into a ball pup sort of match style rifle a tactical rifle just to name a few um, I won't be doing any of those things if if I was to change anything on the gun it will uh, it just be possibly uh, the stock uh, they do a nice grey laminate stock so in the future who knows I might uh, I might change the stock on it. This is a, a, a soft touch stock. It's a bit like the Virac HW110, and um, which is also a, a gun that I did consider buying. But um, after after much scratching my head and research and everything else, I like the way uh, FX works. And the doors are open, and uh, anybody in the gun world with any ideas, they they pursue the ideas. It either works or it doesn't, and they develop the ideas, which is uh, the Smooth Twist X barrel. So if you wished, I, I will never do it, but if you wish to change the barrel line, then you could turn this particular gun here into a 2.2 or a 0.25 or maybe even a 0.30. So you're not restricted to whatever you bought the gun as. Um, it's adaptable, so you can change it to other guns. Totally in appearance. The air cylinder can come off. You can buy an adapter so it has a bottle. Change all the stocks. You can make the, the gun totally different. If you want to spend the money and buy the parts uh, the accessory kits but as a standalone gun out the box uh, it comes in a cardboard box in a nice little with a plastic handle um, you don't get any uh, like crow you don't get a, a plastic box with it but but then it's a high-end gun and you get it for a cheap price effectively I suppose uh, it depends on your budget or what you call cheap but uh, what else can I say about the gun? The manometer is at the pointy end, which is not a problem to me. If I want to look at it, I always see if there's anything in the uh, anything ready to shoot out the barrel. That's what I do. That's that's the way I get about it. So it never bothers me. And then I look at the manometer. This charges to 230 bar, and it's got a probe that pushes in the hole there, and it's supplied with a probe. I should have brought the magazine down, but I can put a I can put some of that me loading the magazines. Twenty two shots the magazine, and uh, as I as I said earlier, um, I don't really use magazines, so.
I will be ordering a single shot tray for this gun and I'll be using it in that format solely because you can get through some serious amounts of pellets and pellets are not cheap I think it was £15 the tin I bought and with this gun and how quick and I'll show you the cocking the cocking action is lovely and smooth uh, there's no effort required whatsoever to cock the gun one finger and it's like that when the magazine's in there there's no effort whatsoever buttery smooth I think is the word and here's a two-stage trigger hopefully you can see this there's the first stage oh it's on safe that's that's unusual for me we'll try again there's the first stage there's the second now the shrouded barrel it's not in the same ballpark as my mpo2 that makes your ears ring that gun it's only got a short tiny little barrel that definitely needs uh, a silencer you probably could get away with no silencer on this gun but i do put a silencer on it it's just that it won't fit in the box with the silencer on so i'll remove the uh, silencer i should have put it there with the silencer obviously it makes it another four inches longer um but it's as quiet as a mouse when the silencer's on there it's not too bad without it but it but it's very quiet with a silencer what else can i say about the gun yeah it's a lego gun it's it's totally adaptable to change into lots of different guns however you want to configure it for for your style of shooting um what you like the looks of it's got an adjustable butt pad at the back on this one you have to undo a screw in the base and then it will slide up and down i've not bothered adjusting it and it's got an adjustable power wheel which i've not used or probably will never use three power settings high medium and low and uh the dream line with a smooth twist x barrel but i'll put some uh, i'll put a little bit of footage shooting this now right it's 50 yards this one show you where it is down there and the JSB heavies there's a the target I'm not going for a bull I'm going for uh, grouping right 10 shots pulls off first shot 50 yards two bit of wind six seven eight I went to the right the wind blew that one nine ten Sixty-eight yard bow in the pigeon or crow, whatever it is. All right, let's see if I can get that. Missed. I hit the I hit the bird, but I didn't get the bell. Got it. Got it. Got it again. Three on the trot. 68 yards. I'm going to go for the golf balls now, but I'm not sure how many over to give it in the corner. 60, what are they? 66 yards, aren't they? Golf balls. When I can zoom in. 
I'll go for the right golf ball. Go oh, on there. 68. Right, I'll go for the golf ball on the right. Yeah. 66 yards. Oh. It looks like it's further away to me than that. Got it, first shot. Ha! Got the golf ball. I'll try the one next to it then. To the left of it. It's a little spinner. Got it, first shot. Ha! Now the the target I put up was at 50 yards and I'll show it with a two pound coin covering it but actually at a one pound coin I didn't have any pound coins on me I only had a two pound coin at the time but uh, a one pound coin almost is just the edge of one pallet hole sticking out on a one pound coin so it's fairly accurate I've got the sneaky suspicion the next time I go to uh, the shooting club all being well tomorrow uh, what the wind forecast is for tomorrow, I don't know. But uh, I've got a sneaky suspicion, judging by that target I shot at 50 yards, that my son's going to be hearing a lot of tinging off that uh, that target. All being well, I'm going to outclass him and outshoot him tomorrow. Fingers crossed. So I will do another... Uh, when I've had this gun a while, and I'll probably make another video to tell you my my thoughts of it. I did say about the uh, the safe there, I believe. Um, safe and fire. I'm left-handed, so there's none on the other side. It's on the right side, but I guess I could get that with my thumb. It's not automatic. It is manual. You have to put it on. 11 mil dovetail rail for the scope. And as I say, if you if you into buying one of these guns in the future, you will need high-rise mounts. I've got the FX adjustable mounts. Um, there's not a lot I can say more about the gun. It's very light. You get roughly, I haven't worked it out exact, but roughly about 180 shots from a fill, 230 bar fill. So you'll get 180 good shots what are regulated. And there's not much more I can say, I don't believe. So, as normal people, thank you very much for watching my video. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you didn't like it. Any comments I'll try and reply to you. So take care till the next one. Bye for now.